Good morning. It's day four. Jesus is teaching his disciples about ministry using the analogy of planting seeds and harvesting the crops. Remember, the woman at the well has gone into town to share with urgency the message that the Messiah may well be at Jacob's well. And if they want to hear him, they better go out to him now. God uses her passionate appeal to motivate the people to leave their concerns and head there. As the crowd approaches, Jesus tells his disciples, verse 36, Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. Well, Jesus sowed the first seed into the heart of the Samaritan woman, but a harvest takes many more hands to reap than it does to sow. Jesus intended his disciples to participate in ministry. Though he could do it all himself, God has chosen to assign us all the ministry of reconciliation, sharing the gospel. We're all called to a life of service. We're all given spiritual gifts that uniquely empower us for ministry. Each gift is important. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. We need each other. Each of us needs to do our part in ministry. Every person matters. Say that with me. Every person matters. And each part is significant. Together, we fulfill the ministry. Uh, no one's an island equipped to do it all themselves. God designed it so that we need one another and complement each other in the work of the ministry. Jesus had joy as he observed the harvest of souls coming in so quickly. Now his disciples would share in that joy as they helped Jesus swing the sickle uh, to continue the analogy and lead these souls to salvation. Verse 38, I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Oh, you've found that to be the case, haven't you? You go to minister to someone and perhaps even lead them to faith in Christ, but then learn that many others came before you to share the gospel, love them, pray for them, be examples to them. You enter into the labor of others and together watch God work. I encourage you to look around and reaffirm your fellow laborers. Remind each other, we're all in this together. Let's cooperate, work together side by side pray together, heart to heart. Here's another truth. Paul wrote, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The idea is that we understand our part in ministry. We speak up, we express actions, we exercise our spiritual gifts, and then we trust God for the results. That was lesson 12. In ministry, God gives the increase. Uh, we share the gospel, but only God can save someone. We disciple new believers, but God is the one who makes them grow. And he does. One other caution. Do not underestimate the significance of every seed sown. Jesus sowed a seed into the heart of one woman, and then it was used to lead to the salvation of many. Verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him. That was lesson 13. In ministry, every seed matters. Say that with me. Every seed matters. Do you recall the seed that Jesus referred to? A mustard seed. It was the smallest of seeds, and yet in time it produced a mammoth-sized tree. Every seed matters, every word of truth spoken, every gesture of loving kindness and compassion. Don't let the devil deceive you into thinking that your ministries don't matter. They do. Don't let him minimize the small things you do to express the gospel to the people he's put in your life. Ministry is not a waste of time. Ministry is like food to you, that which nourishes and satisfies you just like Jesus. So today, let's be faithful. Let's pray. Lord, may we be faithful to sow one seed of truth 
into the soil of someone's heart. Thank you that every seed matters. When we forget, remind us that ministry to people is not a waste of time, but the way you intend us to spend our time. And now, offer your prayers.